Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you and taking you behind the scenes and show you my home office setup. I'm going to be talking to you about all of the components that I deem necessary for my office, as well as some things to consider if you are setting up your own home office. If we have not met before, hello, my name is Tiffany. I am a certified math teacher, a full-time stay-at-home mom, and here on YouTube, I'm showing you how I run my own private online math tutoring and teaching business. Since starting my tutoring business from scratch, I have made a few upgrades to my office space, but I'm going to be showing you how I stayed budget friendly when I first began. I'll show you those swaps that you can make from my setup now if you're just starting out. I'm also going to be showing you some space saving hacks because as you can probably tell, I have a very small space to work with here, so I have to maximize that space. Let's get into the video. The first thing I want to talk about is the background. I just want to say you do not have to have an expensive background in order to start tutoring. This is the one I started with and this is the one I still have. I made this for less than $3. I went to the Dollar Tree, bought some crepe paper, and I mean you can see like it's not even like prettily cut or anything like that. I just tried to crudely measure it and tape it or tack it onto a wall. I had a very small space to work with. I couldn't, didn't want to cover up the light switch for this closet right here. And I also had a limit on how far I could go over here. And then this banner was actually from the Dollar Tree as well. It's from the party section. I'm sure you can try Target as well in their little dollar spot, but you can easily and quickly throw up a background that looks clean and professional and does not have to cost you a lot of money. The Dollar Tree has tons of options for their papers. You can go there and just search through. They also have like these little pieces of tile looking things that you can put up on the background. You can make it as elaborate as you want, but just know that the cost of your background does not determine the value of your teaching. I do just want to point out that I do have a small space. So this little unit right here is not used for my business at all. That's for my personal life. There's also a little file thing back there that I do not use for my business. That's for personal. And then these shelves right here are just for disc golf for my husband and I. So that's not part of my home office setup. We're just sharing the space because we're working with what we have. Also, tell me you have a toddler without telling me you have a toddler. The next thing I want to talk about is the technology that I use to teach online. I do want to say that if I have links for something, it will be in the description box below. So if you find that it's something you want to purchase, you can easily access it there. The first thing is first, you need a laptop if you're going to teach online. And I do have a webcam, an external webcam, but I did not start off with one. So most laptops have an integrated webcam and that's what I used to start off with and it worked perfectly fine. I do want to give a word of caution if you are in the market for a laptop and are looking to purchase one. If you use Zoom, I would not recommend the Chromebook. There's a lot of features on there that you just don't get with a Chromebook. And I would also be considerate of whatever laptop you get because mine has three USB ports which I need for my ring light, my webcam, and my Wacom tablet. So just keep that in mind that if you're planning on plugging a lot of things into the laptop, then you're going to need one that has a lot of USB ports or it's good to just find one that has them naturally so you don't have to get a splicer or anything like that. The other thing, and this is like the biggest thing for me, I'm a math teacher so I do a lot of writing with funny symbols and stuff that's really hard to type. Uh, so purchasing this Wacom right here, the tablet, the writing tablet, was a huge upgrade for me and I love this thing. It makes it so much easier for me to teach and tutor because I just literally, it just feels like I'm writing on a piece of paper and it shows up on the screen. This is definitely one of the biggest purchases I made and I did not always start off with one of these. I actually had a whiteboard, let me show you. I have since turned this over to my toddlers, but when I was first starting out, I just used this whiteboard. I held it up, I used my marker, I would write on it, it would show up on camera, the students would be able to see it through Zoom. So if you're in a position where you can't afford a Wacom tablet or you're just starting off, just grab you a whiteboard. I'll link some below and you can also find them at back to school time. 
at Walmart or wherever. They're really inexpensive and they can help you a ton. The next piece of equipment on my list is the ring light right here. And so you definitely do not have to have a ring light to start out. Just be considerate of what time of day you're teaching or tutoring or working and consider the natural lighting options that you have in the space you're working with. The ring light is honestly just bonus. I had it from whenever I was doing my YouTube channel during my first year of teaching and so it was just already there. I didn't have to purchase it as an extra. But I'm really glad that I have it. I, I would recommend it if you can make that investment. I think that it's great to have the ring light. The last component of the technology section that I will talk about is actually the stand that my laptop is on. I really like this stand because it allows you to adjust it in different ways. You can adjust it to the height that you need. It also has these little holes in it that allows air to get to the motor of your laptop so it's not overheating. And it also allows for some little space underneath where I, I wear glasses. So I take my glasses off and kind of stick them underneath there. I'll put like my notepad here if I'm taking notes during a class. So I love that I get this little space underneath here. A budget friendly option and what I use starting off is just books. So you won't get the nice little cubby space underneath your books, but honestly, this is just such a great, cheap, inexpensive way to get a laptop stand. That wraps up the technology that I use. Now I'm going to talk to you about how I keep things organized. So the organization components that I have include this little desk caddy right here, which actually came with the desk. I found it on Facebook Marketplace, this whole desk and the caddy and the chair. And then I also have this tray organizer and this one right here. The desk also has a drawer that I just keep hair stuff in and some calculators. I'm a math teacher and these little notes right there little post-it tabs. This best teacher ever little decor thing my brother bought me when I first started teaching so I just keep it on my desk. This organizer right here is key. When my laptop is up I can't really reach these things right here so I try to keep my high access items on the sides where I can just reach them. Post-its and pens that's kind of the main thing. When I'm doing private lessons uh, sometimes these things come into play as I'm a math teacher but uh, most of the time in my lessons I don't need those has just some lotion and some chapstick as well. When you're teaching, your lips can get chapped. And also, I always have a coaster here because I always have a drink while I'm teaching or tutoring. That is so important. Over here is my main access stuff. So I do have a calendar. The one that I actually use is filled out. I just printed out a blank one so you can kind of see. And then I also have a weekly calendar. My schedule changes a lot. So, I mean, that's the blank one. But I fill it out and I kind of fill in my semester schedules, my private clients, things like that. So that goes here and then here is my actual planner that I use all the time. Uh, for this little section right here, I do run semester courses. So I keep those papers here and I keep track of them like so. And then I have private clients. Sometimes I do PSAT tutoring. so. I have that to resource whenever I'm working with a client and then I'll just keep their stuff in a folder, the individual clients, so I keep up with everything that we've gone through, what I want us to get through, goals, things like that. And then down here, uh, I do own my own business and so I am always looking to grow it and improve it, so that's just kind of for my business itself. Now in the fall, I am planning to run more classes. So I actually picked this up at a yard sale. That is a budget tip, is to go to yard sales. Uh, lots of extra things. This was less than $2 for this whole entire thing uh, with the folders. So I'm going to label these. I'll take them out and I will put the time of the class and what I do to keep my classes organized. I have a curriculum that I made. I print it out and I'll stick it in here and then I use these little things, which I also got at a yard sale. Uh, I'll kind of take one of these off. This one is kind of weird to write on. Um, but let's say I have the piece of paper here and I'll just kind of post it right there. And if I need to write a note, like which question we left off on, that is what I will do. So the next time I have that class, I just find their folder and then I see exactly where we left off. So all of these will go here and I'll have all the classes there. These little drawers I haven't quite utilized yet. 
again that's for my business so I just turned it upside down um, these are just kind of extra folders page protectors and then extra paper and an extra journal that is kind of how I keep everything organized as far as the trays and little drawers and things like that I also have a trash can here from the Dollar Tree and uh, I would highly recommend having a trash can now I want to talk to you about things to consider when you are creating your own work from home setup. The first thing, as I've already mentioned, is your lighting. If you have a space that has natural lighting, you can kind of check it with your laptop and your webcam and see if it looks good at the time of day that you plan to work and use your webcam. Another thing to consider is noise. So whether that be from outside or from a nearby room or area, you want to consider the time of day that the lawn care comes out or maybe the time of day that there's a lot of noise right next to you if you have a big family maybe around lunchtime it's going to be a little loud purchasing a headset can really help mitigate all of that external noise it has like a little microphone that comes right here so that is something to also consider you want to be near an outlet you always want to keep your laptop on the charger because it can die very easily so find a space that is near an outlet where you can hook up maybe your phone and your laptop and any other electronics that you may need. If possible, I know some of you are working from a really small space and it has to be multifunctional, but if possible, I would recommend just creating a workspace and leaving it a workspace. As you can see, I do have to push my desk up against the wall to keep it out of the way. I don't pull my chair out, I pull my desk out, but that is what I needed to keep this space functional for me and keep it a designated work area. The last thing I would say to consider is to make getting started very easy. I keep my setup here. I can unplug my laptop very easily and go use it about wherever I would like. But to get started, I keep everything else the same. I just set my laptop there, hook up my USB ports and my charger, obviously open it up and I'm ready to go. That is it for this home office setup video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and go ahead and subscribe if you want to learn more about running your own tutoring and teaching business. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.